Hi there, my name is Stephen Coleman. I am the lecturer in ethical hacking and this video here is a little introduction uh, to what the course is about and also a video demo of one of the many videos of the practical uh, application that you will get to perform within the course to give you an idea of what you will be doing over the 12 weeks. So firstly about the course, it's a professional diploma in ethical hacking and the idea is it's going to help you build your confidence in a variety of topics involved in the ethical hacking procedures, such as network hacking and also website hacking. You will learn how to practically apply ethical hacking techniques in a virtual environment. And this is one of the things that is very um, interesting about this course is you also have the theory, but you also have the practical side where you will actually be performing the task in a virtual environment. In network hacking, you will learn how to test the security of networks that allow you to gather comprehensive information about connected devices. In web hacking, you'll learn how to gather information about a target website and how to discover and exploit vulnerabilities to hack into websites also. And then finally, you'll learn how to detect, prevent and secure systems from a variety of attacks. By the end of the course, you will have gained practical experience in ethical hacking fundamentals and techniques that you can use further in your career. Um, and uh, in terms of creating more expertise, uh, it's a really, really good baseline uh, to have. So some of the entry requirements is you want to have basic IT skills. Now, what this means for this course is, for example, being able to easily you know, use desktop applications, uh, have no issue with downloading and installing applications, uh, have some basic troubleshooting skills, so this would be something like, let's say you're, you've maybe had some experience with a tech support role. You, there was an issue that came up and maybe it wasn't necessarily in your knowledge base of, of what you have. And you, and you went down the road and you, you figured it out. You, you, you searched online and you were able to figure out the problem. So having the kind of perseverance to figure out problems, that is a very good trait to have for this type of course. Uh, the reason for this is it'll just help you get the most out of the course. And um, when we're performing uh, ethical hacking, the ideas are trying to break into something that's designed not to be broken into. Uh, so you will have times where you're, you have to have creative thinking and persevere. The course assumes that you have no prior knowledge of ethical hacking. Uh, but by the end of it, you'll be able to actually apply techniques to hack systems as a white hat hacker and understand how to secure systems against a range of attacks. So the, the learning outcomes that we have um, in terms of the course is you're, you're going to have a, a wide broad range of experience uh, from understanding how to navigate um, a, a Linux machine uh, understanding what a virtual environment is how to set up a hacking lab and, and all the different things we talked about with network hacking and web hacking as well so um, in terms of the way that the course is, is broken down in week one We'll have the outline of the course and we'll get to know each other a little bit and I'll be introducing what ethical hacking is and some of the terms and terminology that are important to understand. When we go to uh, week two, uh, we introduce the Linux operating system, uh, Linux distributions, we introduce uh, virtualization software, we use VirtualBox but there are others as well, we introduce how all of this works um, and then we uh, begin to actually start using VirtualBox by installing a Linux distro. So that's that's unit two. Um, then in week three, we look at installing the Kali operating system. And we discover why Kali is used in ethical hacking scenarios and why it's a very, very powerful operating system. And we have an overview of the operating system itself and the tools that are built into it. Along the way, we have Linux labs as well. So if you have no experience with navigating a Linux machine in terms of the uh, the, the command line or terminal, you, you'll learn how to do this along the way as well. So these are very helpful labs that, that are along the way. We also learn how to script in Linux as well. So uh, unit four is where we go into network basics. We have get make sure we have a fundamental understanding of networks and network basics because we are trying to hack into them. Uh, so you may have some experience with this already and it, it may be just a bit of revision or it may be a complete introduction to yourself. But it's all covered uh, in that week. Um, we look at uh, pre-connection attacks uh, this week as well in terms of uh, how can we actually get into a system, how can we hack into, uh, for example, uh, a, a network like passwords for routers, uh, the different types of encryptions, etc. 
Uh, and then we look at system fundamentals um, uh, that week. Uh, week five, we move on to cryptography. And um, we have uh, post-connection attacks. And again, these are all uh, video recorded. So you can actually follow along, uh, slow them down. You can view them anytime you want. Uh, and we will have a look at one of these now in a moment as well. So cryptography is covered. Then we get into, uh, from week six, we get into the footprinting phase of ethical hacking. And uh, then we move into the scanning phase on week seven. And then uh, week eight, uh, we work, look at the enumeration phase. So these are the uh, common stages of ethical hacking. And we look at all the tools and technologies used to um, get the most uh, out of each of these sections. We move on then to system hacking um, in week nine. Uh, week 10, we d deep dive into social engineering, what it is, different types of social engineering attacks. And week 11, we look at web servers and applications, how we can break into these. We also look at cross-site scripting, things like SQL ejection. And then finally, in week 12, we uh, go over the, the steps of a penetration testing report, threat modeling, and the ethical and legal considerations that you might need to um, uh, be aware of if you were going to uh, be you know setting yourself up as an ethical hacker and um, as a contractor or maybe working for a company so that's the, the kind of general overview and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you a little video and um, what the video is doing is it is a man in the middle attack gathering information from a website all the steps that you see are explained during the course so this video here is maybe you know, kind of in, in and around week four. So you're not going to maybe understand the tools, everything that's been used here at this point, but that, don't worry about that. It's just to give you a little demo of the, the practical side. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll play that for you guys now. Okay, so at this point, we have net.probe on, which has turned net.recon on as well. We also have the ARP spoof attack happening with BetterCap. So at the moment on our uh, Windows uh, machine, if we pop into uh, the ARP-A uh, table here, we can see that the physical MAC address of the router here is pointing to this the Kali machine. So we have this all set up. So with this, at this point, we can now start to spy on the network devices. So if we come back to the Kali machine over here, we're in BetterCap, and there's another module that we're going to be using within BetterCap to do this. So at the moment ARP, ARP spoof is running, event stream, net probe, and net recon. We've seen how to do that already from the previous videos. So now we're gonna turn on the module net.sniff. So like before, all we need to do is type in the module name, and then on. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna sniff the network um, for the target that we have. So the current target we have is for the IP address of the Windows machine, which is 10.0.2.5. Remember, we could have multiple targets specified by setting those particular attributes for the ARP spoof. But we're just sniffing the one machine. Now, what we're going to see here is we're going to be able to navigate a browser on the Windows machine. So we're going to use Google Chrome. We'll open up Chrome here. And we're going to navigate to a, a vulnerable website. Now, this particular uh, sniffing here that we're going to do will only work on HTTP websites, not HTTPS. We will look at HTTPS in coming videos. But what we're going to do here is just show the power uh, of this man in the middle attack. So we're going to go to VunWeb. This is a HTTP website. And there's a couple of links here. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate on the browser and we're going to go back and forth between our uh, our, our Kali machine here to see what um, is being what kind of information is being gathered. okay So here we are going to go in to test HTML5 one web. Um, I'm actually logged in here at the moment, so I'm going to I'm going to log out. Now this is all, um, um, as, you, as you would say, set up. It's kind of pretend. So um, let's say, for example, we'll say, uh, you know, Steve, 
UCD test. That's my username. And then I'll, I'll put in a password here that you can't see at the moment. And then I'll log in. Okay. Now I haven't set up an account or anything like this. This isn't what this website is about. But what is interesting here is you can see here I'm logged in up on the top right hand side. I put in a password. You haven't been able to see it. But let's have a look and see what's gone on here on the Kali machine. So because this uh, net.sniff is running, we can see here that the username that I supplied, Steve UCD test, has been caught. And the password has also been caught in plain text. Okay, so HTTP is plain text. This is the transfer in terms of the data. Remember, our machine is in the middle. So we are getting the information that's sent from the Windows machine. Um, the Windows machine thinks it's sending directly to the router. It is not. It's sending it to us. And then we are passing it on then to the router. And then the information coming back um, in terms of responses comes to us. And then also then uh, goes back into that Windows machine. So you can see here we've caught this information. Okay. You can also see we've got lots of information here in terms of the particular um, uh, the origins and the different types of encoding and um, lots of information uh, in terms of what's going on on that site. So let, let's play around with this a little bit more just to give you an idea. Let's go back. Um, let's go back a couple of uh, to, to another link here that's available for us. And we'll look at the uh, test PHP. So again, this is just like a kind of a setup website. Let's go to Browse Artists and let's see what's been picked up. Again, you can see down here we have a GET request, and um, it gives you the name of the website test.php1web.com, and artist.php is the current page that I'm on here. You can see that URL there. Okay, so it's capturing that URL. Let's uh, let's see what happens if we add in a comment. Uh, so, we'll put in again, Steve, UCD test, and we'll pop in um, all my info is available on Kali. Okay, um, so let's submit that. Okay, so we've submitted this here and then we'll exit out. So let's see what happens when we go back to the Kali machine again. Again, we can see here that we have entered in a name and we've entered in a comment and uh, it's been submitted in. Okay, and that's the, in the post request. So the point here is that what we are seeing at this point is information, all the information that's been uh, transferred and transmitted on that particular browser. This is directly with HTTP only. So uh, as I said, we'll look at HTTPS again. But this is how uh, you, you would uh, perform this and do this particular um, uh, sniffing.